What's up? What's up, everybody? This is your humble host, Jamal Barakin for GT Media Reviews. Good evening, Detroit. Good evening, world. How are you? It's a marvelous Sunday. Uh, we just got over Captain Marvel being released on Friday. $453 million worldwide box office. Fuck you, haters. You stop. You didn't stop nothing. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do a uh, video review. I know people were expecting me to make a video review for Captain Marvel. I'm not gonna do it. If I was, if I'm being perfectly honest, I, you know, tra full transparency. I didn't expect Captain Marvel to make the bank it was making. It was a lot of chatter on social media. A lot of people were upset going into the release. I did my review. I touched on the the points I felt were relevant as a for the film. I tried to get away from the, the political stuff and uh, the feminist stuff because I just felt it was unnecessary uh, for the review. Um, you can check that article out on my blog at gtmediareviews.com. I'm also going to link it here in the video so you can check that out. But long story short, I'm not making a video on it. I'm over it. I want to move on. Uh, I have a uh, podcast coming up tomorrow. We'll talk about it a little bit there. But I just want to keep the negativity uh, to a minimum. Uh, long story short, video, Captain Marvel rating, I gave it a C. It's an average movie. I think Brie Larson was miscast. Everything about the movie, everything else about the movie was pretty good. Uh, ben Mendelsohn is the GOAT. So, that being said, let's get to this article. This article is by Rich Johnson for Bleeding Cool Magazine, uh, bleedingcool.com. Uh, there's a lot of ads all over the place on this website. Hopefully my computer doesn't get AIDS after going through this, but let's talk about it. So uh, Dan DiDio is the co-publisher of DC Comics. If you've been following the events in comic book news and the media, DC's reduced their comic publishing line by like 10 or 15 percent. Uh, because they say there are basically too many comics on the shelves. It's too many comics, uh, and their books aren't getting in the hands of consumers, so they're looking for different strategies uh, going forward. I read this article before I, uh, I fired it up, fired up the um, OBS, and I feel like I, the direction DC is going in is the right direction. And I, I, I think they, they see the the... The, 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 the oncoming storm in the comic industry. Stores are closing down. Books aren't selling. Local comic shops are being exploited by certain publishers. And I think there's there's a change that's going to come. So, here we go. Uh, he told retailers that he believes that the quality of available talent pool isn't deep enough for the numbers of titles that the, com the comics industry is publishing. That there's too many comics, not enough quality creators to create them. However, DC Comics has better rates and royalties than the competition to access a better talent pool. This is a loaded response, in my opinion, from Dan, uh, because there is a lot of talent out there. And I feel like if you look at across the board like if you look at indie comics like i'm reading tom scully's gobots right now and this guy is a beast if you if you know anything about tom scully he did uh gobots he's doing he did a, a comic book called godland and he did the excellent gobus uh, gi joe versus uh transformers comic that came out a couple years ago if you're a fan of jack kirby that guy's a beast you have uh the the idw team over at at the doing Ninja Turtles on at, and that line of comics is like one of the best wrong com, com, lines of comics out there. Marvel has some good talent there, but they've really cheaped out on the talent. It's like they're pulling their artists from a, a B league, a, a D league. And they're, they have them writing like X-Men or Avengers or whatever. So a lot of times you'll pick up a Marvel book and then the, you'll look at it like, damn, man, I just paid three 99 for this shit. So I think the talent is out there. I think that Dan is just making a, a superficial excuse for why his books aren't selling. So that's that's one of one of the things. Uh, another thing that he says he's looking at. He talked about DC's plan to work with talent to hone single issue storytelling uh, rather than decompress writing for the collection, which has become more popular in years. One of the problems I have with comics in general, and this is as a reviewer. I always say in my reviews that every comic is somebody's first book. So if I'm reading, I pick up a book and I get the book based on the cover and it's in the middle of a story arc. 
and nothing happens in that book. I feel like I wasted my money. I'm probably not going to come back for the next issue. Like if I get like a, a fake out cliffhanger and I pay $4 for the book or I don't really have a, a solid grasp of what's going on in the story arc, that's a wasted purchase. And it really, what it really does is it makes your reader not want to come back. So if DC wants to focus in on single issues or just make books with solid st uh, openings and closing parts of that book, uh, conclusions with a solid cliffhanger i think is better for the medium overall because right now it's about most books i read are pretty are okay but the issue the problem i have and i have this problem with tom king's heroes in crisis is that you'll have a book where it's pretty much nothing going on in it and then you'll get a conclusion that's like a cliffhanger and then with that book a lot of the cliffhangers don't even lead directly into the next issue so it's like well what happened so I'm, I'm totally on board with with focusing on single issues and strengthening that part of the business because I think there's a lot of opportunity there and a lot of people are walking away from comics because the comic storylines are so decompressed right now. You, you'll have a 12 issue series and like only six issues are really relevant. And let's see, he says he revealed that their decision, DC, to focus on publishing comics and more of a shared universe to create stories that the audience believes matter and that they will be marketing comics that aim to reworking their marketing department to reflect this. I totally just butchered that whole segment of this paragraph, but I have been drinking. So if I seem a little off today, uh, there we go. We're going to blame the, the al alcohol. Uh, what he's really saying here is that he wants to focus on a shared universe. So DC cut about 10%, 10 or 15% of their comics line, and they want to focus on a shared universe. It's a lot easier to do that when you're not publishing 90 comics. So this is a win for editorial. Uh, I remember back when I was a kid, like you'll have an X-Men comic and say like Magneto shows up. You know, if you have that X-Men book, that Magneto would not show up in any other comics that month. Why? Because he's in X-Men. The problem with DC over the past year, since I've been doing reviews and buying more comics, is that you'll have, let's say the Joker will show up in Dark Knight's Metal. He'll show up in Batman. He'll show up in Harley Quinn. And it'll be the same time across three books so what that does to a reader is it blows continuity you have no idea what's going on so that's that's a huge it's a passive problem it's not nothing that's really aggressive if you're not reading harley quinn you don't care if the joker's in that book if, you, if you're not reading justice league you don't care that just that joker is part of the injustice league or the legion of doom so it's not a big issue but shared universes may add value uh, to your company and if you don't believe that well, look at the marvel cinematic universe part of the reason those book those movies are so successful is because the universe is shared if you miss something you've missed a part of the overarching story so if i miss uh joker's appearance in batman and he shows up in justice league if the continuity doesn't matter then i can i'm, I'm okay just reading batman if the continuity does matter and there's a reason why Joker is in both books, then continuity does matter. But if I see that these books aren't connected at all, there's less like it's less likelihood that I'll buy the other books that tie them together. If that makes any sense. Uh, this next paragraph here is talking about fans thresholds for variants and whatever. It's a lot of uh, jargon about variant covers. And I think from a, a publisher's perspective, uh, the publisher sends out books. They have incentives. They tell the local comic shop, hey, you need to buy this many issues in advance before you have any sales data. So the and once those books are sold to the local comic shop, if the comic shop doesn't sell those books. They're on the hook for them. They already paid for them in advance. So I, I see both sides of this deal. But what really hurts is when you have a publisher like Marvel where they'll have a book that has 25 variants. And you have to order 50 copies up front. If you can't sell those books, you're on the hook for them and you may never sell them. So that, that means that you have product that you can't even move. So I understand both sides of it. But being that I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, I visit my local comic shop every week. I, I see what, the, what they have on their, um, on their shelves that they can't move. It's bad for for retailers if you have if you're forced to buy product that you can't move or you don't have any sales data for. You buy 50 copies of Iron of um Iceman. 
people don't like Iceman. People don't read Iceman. Iceman sits on the shelves. You can't move it. You're selling the book for a quarter. You still can't move it. You burn the shit, you know, when you're barbecuing. It seems like a wasted investment. So uh, another thing that Dan mentioned is that he's worried about the impact of increasing the standard cover price of a comic from $2.99 to $3.99. He's not worried about the impact that had and indeed $4.99 becoming more and more common. He sees the increase in the division of sales between their best selling comics and their lowest selling titles. And, and that's something that they're trying to com- correct. And they are trying to make print comics have added value that don't appear in a digital edition. One of the biggest problems that I have as a consumer and visiting my comic shop every week is that comics are three ninety nine minimum. OK, so you have reprints that are like a dollar, but new comics are pretty much three ninety nine. If you have an event like, say, Heroes in Crisis, and I keep picking on Heroes in Crisis because I just finished reading that book and it's it's, it's not good. But I'm paying four ninety nine per issue and for a product that really is decompressed and pretty much everything this article saying is really decompressed the books aren't re- they don't really have any forward momentum and i'm buying it because i respect tom king as a writer and i know he's going to tie this up but honestly if i hadn't bought the first issue i probably would have waited for the trade other than that you have a lot of books out there that are 3.99 and you read that book and you're like wow this book i read the book in like five minutes i'll probably never read it again and at that point, it's a waste of money. We look at a value proposition, uh, $3.99 for a new comic. That's 22 pages. I read it in five minutes. Or I can fire up, fire up Apex Legends real quick, get a couple games in. It's free. Go about my day. And I, I get the same value. I like comics. Comics is my chosen medium. Almost, and I'm also old as shit. So when I'm reading my comic books, I'm happy. But if I read a book in five minutes, nothing happens in the book. The art really isn't all that great. The story didn't move forward. I feel like I'm wasting my money. And I feel like a lot of consumers are feeling that way too, which is why you have people walking away from comics and you have a lot of comic shops closing. Another thing to consider is that when you have books like uh, The War of the Realms events coming out in March, Uh, The first issue has 25 variants. If you buy the entire event, including most variants, not everybody's going to do that, but you're going to get people out there to do, you're going to spend over close to a thousand dollars for this entire event. And that's not being hyperbolic. If you look up the prices for these comics is you're going to spend close to a thousand dollars for one Marvel event. Comics are too expensive and you're not going to get new readers. Uh, Dan also mentioned that he's seen massive growth in interest from young, young adults and young kids lines. I don't know about that. I, 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 when I go to the comic shop, I don't see kids there. Everybody that I see at the comic shop is either my age. I mean, I'm over 30. I'm not going to give my exact age because I'm, you know, I'm just not, but I'm not going to give my exact age, but I don't see young kids or young adults there. I see people around my age or older. I saw a guy walk into the comic book shop. He had a fucking walker. I'm like, oh my God, this guy was around in the golden age. He was buying golden age comics. And I, I gave this guy an entire backstory for why he was still here. But one thing I can tell you uh, is that I don't see kids in comic shops. So maybe Dan is looking at scholastics or he's just making stuff up, pulling it, pulling stuff out of his ass, but I don't see parents paying $30 a week for a five issue pull. So let's say I have, he pick, I get five comics for my kids. I don't see too many parents out there buying five or six comics and spending $30 on comic books for their kids. This may be happening in some places. If this is happening and you buy comics for your kids, how much are you willing to spend for your comics? That's, you can put that comment, but that, that, um, Answer that question below in the comments. I really appreciate any responses or feedback. Uh, You can tell me what's happening in your comic shop. I'm very interested, but I know uh, I almost totally agree with Dan on pretty much 90% of all of his points that he's making here. I think that the talent is out there, and I believe that what DC's problem is, is that DC makes a lot of bad decisions on certain things like that their vertical line sucked and part of the reason why it sucked was because they had the wrong people on the wrong books at the wrong time and those books didn't sell 
you make bad decisions like when you have Batman Damned that comes out and you have Batman's penis in the book. People don't want that shit. You know, the only re- people that have Batman Damned, number one, are people like me who had it pre-ordered. But when I bought it and I got home and I saw Batman's penis, I'm like, oh, my God. This is not what I wanted in this book. I had, I, it's not something I ever thought I wanted to see, and I didn't. So I have it, and I'm going to sell it eventually on eBay because it's going for 100 bucks a, a copy, but it's, it's a bad decision where you have Border Town that's like openly racist toward white people or whatever. It's like, why is this in this book? So DC has different problems. I, I, I'm glad that they're trying to, to make some changes. I do think that uh, if, if, you, if DC is trying to account for how much money people have in their pockets on any given week. I think that's a good move. I think that going to spend 30 or $40 on comics every week is unsustainable. And the the prices are too high. Even at three 99, it's too high. I think a happy median would be between two fifty and $3 an issue. You know, people still supporting, you can pick up more books. I know I was buying more comics and experimenting a lot more when rebirth uh, first launched and the books were, Two ninety nine a piece, just because you know I was reading Marvel and Marvel was like three ninety nine and up, so it was like okay, well I'm gonna stop reading Marvel and pick up more DC books. And the DC books were pretty good. Also, if there's only fifteen, if there's only twenty or thirty or fifty books coming from DC, you know it adds incentive for readers to pick something up. It's like okay, well you know DC has a Super Sons book and they only had three books out this month, and maybe I can check this out. You know it's it's, it's it's worth looking at. So I'm going to bring this video to a close. I don't think I'm rambling yet, but if I am, let me know. You can put that in the comments too. Am I rambling? If you have any topics or suggestions that you want to see me talk about, I'm probably going to review Heroes in Crisis before I go to bed. I may make a video on it tomorrow, but really that book, it's a hot mess. It's like, okay, if you, it may come together in trade format or Tom King may just sub- subvert all expectations. I'm not expecting much. I know I keep talking about books, other comics or whatever, but you can check me out at my website at gtmediareviews.com or you can catch me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr at Jamal is Trash. I just posted my Captain Marvel review. If anybody's interested, again, I'm not going to make a video for that one. I gave it a C. It's a decent movie. You're okay to watch it. You won't get in your feelings after you walk out of it. If you do, something may be wrong with you and you want to get it checked out. But the movie's average is inoffensive. Uh, we got a lot of talk about this damn cat. I'm a cat person. I'm not impressed by the cat. You know, that's it. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Subscribe to my blog. I post about four or five comic reviews per week. I'm way behind, but I try to stay up and post a couple new issues every week. Mix it up with the new and the old. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up. I'm around. Jamal is trash. GT Media Reviews. I love the support. I love the feedback. And I appreciate everyone that stops by. Thanks. Have a great evening.